looking at the team comps, is anything jumping out to you? Okay, Gragas is a, a huge deal. Um, when you have a Gragas, he's he's also uh, relatively impressive. We, we've got a uh, we've got a, a Lulu either Lulu top or Lulu mid. So we've got a Lulu Baron lane or a Lulu mid lane. I think uh, having a look at the composition, I'm imagining that it's going to be Lulu into Jarvan, and then we keep Gragas mid. Gragas is usually played mid. He's usually more impactful with his ability to roam a little bit like the Evelyn. But uh, I'm liking. I'm liking the comp from Soy this time round. M much more in terms of power picks and the Shivana Lulu combo is going to be there. Lulu building a more heavy AP build path. So very, very excited to see Soy. If they're going to win with a comp, it's going to be this one. We are on the perspective of Soul of Soy right now. That's F2Y and their team. One snapper on the opposite side. Currently up 1-0 in this best of three series. One snapper win this game. Currently the red team. Then that's the, that's the end of our night, Excoundrel. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Right. It looks like we've got a lane swap coming through, though, here, TJ, because uh, Gragas, you know what I talked about previously about when you when you initiate a lane swap, you need to make sure you have a Baron laner with a good wave clear. Well, Gragas can do that. Gra I thought Gragas might be going mid, but this makes sense if they're going to initiate a lane swap. Gragas has the barrels, which means he'll be able to clear waves much more readily and much more easily. Jarvan, a little bit less so. So they're going to nullify that Jarvan top lane pick by initiating the lane swap and giving the. Um, uh, the Gragas the ability to wait. Are they just lane swapping back? Wait, why would you initiate the lane swap <laughs> and then just lane swap back? We gotta keep lane swapping. I don't know. Yeah, this uh, doesn't make any sense. Why would you do that? They they did initiate it, which is where the confusion comes from. They weren't responding to something. Yeah, they weren't responding to this. This is something that they did. And they were they tried it out, Excadrill, and they did not like it. Oh, we are going back to how it was before. But now they're just behind an experience in gold. And not not much, obviously, but anyway. You ever, you I'm ever just tried gonna, on gonna... an outfit in a shop and just been like, mm, not me. That's what they do. I did. don't try on outfits because I know what my really? size is. So yeah, I know what my size is, so I just buy it without trying it on. That's what you get when you're as confident as Excoundrel. Uh, here is the one-snap POV. It is a little low frame rate, so we'll try and cut off of it if it gets too bad. But I think it's valuable to see their perspective, particularly their jungler perspective, after Renji was so important to that game one. Yep, and he's gone for the Wukong again, obviously very confident in the way that he can uh, in play this particular uh, champion. Uh, one snap in the, the sort of the driving seat in terms of the early game, they were able to freeze top lane slightly, making it more difficult for Gragas to, to get into the lane. They were able, they were actually in the process of freezing the bot lane too, which you can, why you can see Misfortune and Braum have not pushed up a significant distance in this lane. Uh, one snap, I would say, in a stronger position at this point in time. Uh, they also have what I like to call the death bowl. Um, T, TJ, you probably have seen this composition in your time in, in League of mm -hmm. Legends. This is a very traditional League of Legends composition that, that spans the ages. Uh, it is essentially called the Death Ball because you have Jarvan deliver the Orianna Ball with his flag and drag combo, which is what we call his initiation. He, he jumps into his ultimate, which is a giant bowl, uh, and then they can shockwave on top of it with the Misfortune ultimate over the top of that. It's, a again, another teamfight wombo combo that if you pull it off correctly, is devastating. Uh, Renji does get a little bit caught out here in the mid line. You can see that uh, they were playing really aggressive, constantly stealing away camps. We don't have the Evelyn to do that this time for one snap, but you're still seeing them play really aggressively across the map. And that's really fun to see from an organized team. They're taking advantage of their characters to bully out a few camps here or there and be able to earn out a jungle advantage. Yeah, I'm really, I think. Um... Renge has done a really good job of that. Like, even if he just takes away a couple of those, um, a, a couple of those, uh, are we calling them Krugs? They are called Krugs in this game, I assume. If he takes a couple of those Krugs away from Shivana, those are high experience camp. And as you know, if you clear the big one, the the camp will despawn. Uh, you know, after you, mm -hmm. if you leave, if you leave any of the the smaller Krugs there, they will just despawn. So Shivana loses all of that experience regardless. So all you need to do is go and take away the main camp. And then following that, or the main the main creep in that camp. So once you take that, the rest of the camp will despawn if you leave it. So Shivana loses the golden experience anyway, and you've denied it. And he's doing the same thing here. Look, you know, that, that camp will despawn. Um, he cleared the big one and it will eventually despawn. And then he, he was just trying to go into just potentially impact that uh, that side lane. So 
that's that's the what he did to the Shivan on the top lane, and that ca that camp is worth a lot of gold and a lot of experience. It's a really good way to deny that from the enemy jungler by just going in and taking the the main creep from the camp, and it will despawn, and then the enemy jungler can't get any of it. That cool little creeps, man. That's messed up. Uh, so far, so that, good for Soul of Soul. Yeah, that's the that's this... the that's the traditional name. <laughs> that's the traditional name for these things, CJ. <laughs> so far, so good for Soul of Soy, as game number two is going much better than game number one. We're a whole five minutes in, and they haven't lost a devastating team fight yet. Nope, exactly, but we do have that first dragon being started up, the Orianna Jarvan rotating over for it, obviously denying dragons from Shivana is the name of the game here. Ooh, gets dangerous, a deep dive through the backline will result in a dead brawl. And that should be the fight. Instead, it's a full Shivana commit round the side. Renji able to stay on the front lines. Uh, Cloud Drake does go over to the Jarvan. So one snap so far so good and may even be able to disengage from this mess. And no, full chase down is in effect. A deep dive from the back lines. This Kaisa doing a lot of work. But oh, Orchana oh. tries to cut through the front lines. But there is so much gold being passed over to this Kaisa. It needs to be turned around by big Oriana plays. Luckily, we got those. My god, that Alistair Pulverize was absolutely disgusting, dude. Three people on 5% HP. He's like the, the, the dying breath. I want to take a look at that again. A lot of this fight was very kind of janky and all over the place. Obviously, the Jarvan getting the uh, Drake is great from denying that from Shivana. Kaisa uses her ultimate to execute, but watch the, watch the Alistair. MVP. This, this fight was lost without the Ooh. Alistair right here. He's back. Dave. Dave is back. Dave. We, we lost producer Dave. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're All now right. watching uh, F2Y again. So we're back onto Soul of Soy here, who are, yeah. again, slightly struggling. Uh, I was going to say, oh, I'm going to hold this thought because Soul of Soy's situation has just gotten worse. Uh, that was another shove through the mid lane. And I believe Rift Harold is getting picked up as we speak by one snap. Oh, it's a two-level advantage for the Java, and that's actually nutty, although maybe not the best place mm. to be looking for a fight under the enemy turret. You win those F2Y. Go for it. I don't think he wins that, but I wanted to see it. Uh, does call for a rotate nonetheless. So uh, let's, let's frame it this way. One snap, despite everything that just happened, are still in a better position than they were last game at this time code. Uh, what can they do to get back in this? What can they do to stabilize? Difficult question to answer because I, again, I don't think your team fight is as strong Ooh. as the team fight that that um, maybe this the one flash over the wall. Oh, we got oh nice Field body back. slam flash. We'll commit F two Y for big damage on the combo, and they shut down the Oriana. It's a start. It is a start, TJ, and a start that they needed. They're going to pick up the turret in the same time. Uh, again, next dragon fight is going to be especially influential. They have unfortunately lost their mid lane tier one, though. Mid lane tier one is like the key to opening the map. Um, so I'm going to be a little stressed for, for Solar Story over the next few minutes. We have another, another fight kind of breaking out on the bottom side of the map here as we have that body slam coming through once more. Nice body slam beautiful. from from F2Y. Some sexy Gragas action. Uh... Pressure down bottom will be the Rift Herald that we saw get picked up a moment ago. You do see the Cataclysm, the Jarvan ult spent as well to no avail. Uh, one snap will take a turret, but not get anything more. Uh, actually, well, that's, I think that's that's a win. Like As I said with, with, with Rift Herald, all Rift Herald can offer you, at, at best, it'll offer you two turrets most of the time. Um, sometimes if you're very lucky, you can use it to push all the way to the inhibitor. Um, Getting a turret out of Rift Herald is exactly what the obje the the uh, the objective was designed Ooh. for. So I I think um yeah I think they're being a bit cheeky in the jungle. I don't think they want to take this fight. They're trying to set up something for the for the dragon. Um, for the dragon. Yeah, getting a yeah getting a turret out of a Rift Herald is the ideal scenario. So I think they're happy with that. I mean they've 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 broken every tier one turret in the game so far for the enemy. We've got Alistair breaking into a fight here. Yeah, but before John is starting this off with a disgusting amount of damage for an Alistair. Enables everything and hasn't gone down yet. The big cow bringing home the bells. This will be another pickup. Finally, the Alistair goes down, but Chami already incredibly low. F2Y has to back away. They did just grab the Jarvan, though, which should mean yeah. there's no further punish. Unfortunately, 
The damage has already been done, Excoundrel. I mean, they got the uh, they got the dragon, which is the most important thing here. You can see Renji just focuses down the dragon again, denying another Drake from Shivana. Uh, Shivana did try and jump over the wall here. Did she get? Oh, she stole oh, it. She did. She actually stole it. That's insane. That is such a big win. I I, I was uh, almost certain that that went in favor of one snap, but Shivana Especially... jumps over and gets the steal. The initial burst was too early, um, and I mm -hmm. caught that on our first pass, so I just assumed there was no way that that, that, that got picked up. But a really huge flag from the Shivana there. Yeah, absolutely. That's that, that, that is enough to start to make Soul of Soy a little bit more competitive in this game. Absolutely. Um, I'd love to see it. I think that was a, a, a really, really good Hail Mary jump from the, uh, the Shivana to go over and take that, that dragon away, because now again, Infernal coming up, that puts them on a more even stead for that third dragon fight. And, you know, as Dave said in his previous analysis, that the, the Infernal Drake is probably the most impactful for Shivana in terms of team fight impact. Um, as a, a champion, you're going to get that true damage in your dragon form, which is absolutely insane. Again, though, we didn't have a proper cohesive team fight from One Snap, and that's what I'm keeping my eyes on. That's what I'm looking towards. Having a team fight where One Snap can actually make that wombo combo work. The 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 flag and dragon strike combo into Cataclysm with the shockwave on top, with the with the bullet time layered in over that. It's very difficult to fight against that. Shivana's getting caught out. She does have her transformation ready to go, but she will just back off for the time being. Yeah. Uh, so we we slow things down here again after that uh, Drake got stolen away, after that fight was a little bit closer. You could see one snap had a moment where they just started, mm, if we don't take any risks. Uh, and they waited for this Baron to come up, and now we'll develop a full team fight around it. Front line, so far so good. Big bullet time. Zones back the entire fight. And there is the Wombo combo, the front line cataclysm from the Jarvan, and a Wukong from Renji just diving into the back lines and cleaning everything up. A double kill already picked up, and that will be a triple to close out the team fight. Renji going huge on the Wukong for one snap, and that is a devastating victory for them in this game. Oh my god, you've got to look at Renji in this team fight. Again, just you, show, show you what he does. Wukong can obviously activate his Cyclone twice on the team fight. Jumps in, gets the initial knockup onto the Shivana, oh immediately cycles into the second knockup. And again, the Cyclone, the clone used afterwards for the second Cyclone. He dives onto the Kaiser in the back line. She is dead. The CC that Renji applied in that fight was absolutely insane. Single handedly creating the space for his team to just layer in that that sort of huge damage combos that they have, the Shockwave and the Bullet Time. Renji is an absolute beast this game, and he's even going the tankier Wukong build, not going for that uh, the Ghostblade GA build that we see so often. He's going for that Black Cleaver, and the Black Cleaver uh, will be able to shred the armor during Cyclone, allowing Misfortune to deal more damage with her Bullet Time. He's building a, a kind of a teamfight orientated build here, not looking for the, the, the solo burst kills with the Ghostblade. He's gone for the Black Cleaver to have team-wide impact to make that Wombo combo with, with Misfortune work more effectively. Really, really nice pickup here. Here. Uh, Renji has been especially impressive for me. And we talked about ease of execution during our first game of the day, and I think that's maybe something we should harp on again here, is it is really, really easy for one snap to win team fights. They have so many easy overlapping combos, where if multiple players engage on the same set of targets, they will win by default. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem for, for Soy is that for their team fight wins to become a reality, it relies on really optimal positioning from the Kaiser. Great CC, great. Um, exactly. You've got to peel for your Kaiser incredibly well with, with the Lulu. There isn't any kind of like solid engaged follow up. Uh, and so that's one of the big problems. Glacial that's a nice fissure. engage. What on earth? That's actually huge. To the a little bit of lag, but we're past it. <laughs> the whole time shreds through the back of the team fight, though, just as surely as we briefly shredded through the space time continuum. <laughs> what on earth can I just see? Oh, I no. Wait. They, uh, they just won. They just won. Oh, my God. Yeah. That was a perfect way to. <laughs> oh, my God. The